Hello there everybody, it's Sally here and welcome on a Wednesday to Tuesday's teaching tips. So I'm a day late today, I hope you'll forgive me. And today I want to introduce you to something I've got in my hand called the flying note. Um, so let me just go back a moment because last week I was talking about the importance of rhythm so far. So the importance of um, taking your students as they're learning to hear the music, as they're learning to internalize the music, as they're learning to make sense of the pitches and the rhythms in their heads, that before they become completely sort of introduced to notation on the stave, hands together, etc., that they go through a process of reading from rhythm so far. And just to remind you, this is a piece in rhythm so far, okay? So you can see it's got the rhythm and it's got the singing names underneath. So this one is a song called Apple Tree. And it goes, apple tree, apple tree. And with a student, what I would do is I'd get them to clap the rhythm and then I'd get them to sing it with the so, so me, so, so me. I've just had a young, young student this morning, actually. And... Um, we had done Mary Had a Little Lamb. Mary Had a Little Lamb. And I showed him the the song in rhythm so far, and I didn't mention what it was. And um, we went through the process of clapping the rhythm and then singing the song. And he got to the end and went, oh, it was Mary Had a Little Lamb. He was so excited. And then he couldn't stop playing it. And of course, the beauty of doing this is that then we can move our, uh, our do um, and our re and our me to all sorts of different places, which makes life very, very easy. When I say that, move it to all sorts of different places on the keyboard. And we can show that as long as the relationship between do, re, mi stays the same, actually we can literally play it on any three notes, keeping the relationship the same. So, on to the flying note. So this is my flying note. And this really is the next stage of starting to um, starting to read from notation. Now you can see what I've got here is I've actually got a stave written out. And um, I can then use my flying note on the stave. And I've just realized I'm standing at the, at the wrong side. So I'm gonna come this side. Um, because I need to be this side to actually show you how the flying note works. So um, I'm really indebted. And, and the flying note is something that's come out of um, the whole Kadai tradition. I think Chevet, the, a Frenchman called Chevet, was the first person to, to, to use this. And it literally flies around, so it's not fixed at all. So I can say, this note is do, in which case we have do, re, mi. Or I can put do down here on the first space, no, still no, no specific pitch, so I can put my do anywhere in my voice as well. Do, re, mi. And that helps our students to understand that um, the pitches can move, that the do can move, and therefore the re, the mi, etc. But also, you know, that um, just because this is the second line doesn't mean that this note is called G. So without a clef, the clef, you know, C-L-E-F, meaning in French key, uh, literally the, this unlocks, a clef unlocks the fixed letter names. Without a clef, there is no meaning here. Go back to medieval music, Renaissance music, etc., and you'll find that every single voice has a different clef. So you have the soprano clef and the alto clef, which of course we still use uh, for the viola. Uh, we have uh, a tenor clef, which we use in the uh, in the cello, etc. On the whole, though, the, the clefs have gone out of use except for the ones that we specifically use, which is bass, tenor, alto, and treble. But of course, if you're only a treble instrument player, you tend to think, oh, treble clef, this note is always G, no matter where it is. So the flying note is fabulous because it helps the students and the pupils to understand a bit more that that pitches change um, and that they are not fixed in any way. It's just the relationship between the notes that stay the same. So me is always that, always. Me, re, do, that relationship always stays the same. So the flying note. I have a very posh one here, which my husband made for me as he's a furniture designer and maker. 
Um, however, before this, I had a wand, basically, and it was a wand I'd bought in a party shop or something, and it had a star at the end, and I would use that as my flying note. So, would love to see if you can find uh, a flying note and um, find some use for it, because as I say, they're really, uh, really useful things, and they're a lot of fun to do with students as well. Okay, hope that's helpful. Bye for now. Katie! Yes.